What are you drinking, Pa? Old engine oil, Junior. What? You can't drink old engine oil. That'll kill you. Oh, relax, Junior. It's beer. I think if we drank too many of them, it'd probably make you sick, but I don't think it would kill you. Huh. Yeah, I think I'll just stick to hams. Hey, uh, when are we going over to Uncle Farrell's to pick up that old fly mo? I don't know, Junior. Why don't we go now? I got a couple of old snow blowers I need to take up to him and sell for me. Since nobody down here wants to buy them. What? Right now? Haven't you been drinking? It's only old engine oil, Junior. Yeah, I don't think so, Pa. I'll drive. Hey, Bill! Uncle Andy! Tell your brother I said hi. Where the heck did you come from? My house, in Beverly. All right, let's go, Pa. I'm just gonna hang out here. Drink some pop bowls, eat some chip bowls. Got the door all locked. We'll have to go around the back. All right, let's go. about these things so I asked my brother Farrell and this is what he had to say. So Farrell, what year is this Flymo? Now this Flymo is in 1965. Flymo was invented in 1964 by a gentleman by the name of Carl Dahlman in the UK. A year later Toro licensed it from him and came out with this mower right here. It's got a power products engine on it which is later known as uh, Tecumish. Oh, that's right, the Cummings. And if you notice, it has dual exhaust, dual mufflers. Isn't that what you call them? Muffkins. Oh, I'm sorry, dual muffkins. The problem with this mower is, it doesn't really cut certain grasses very well. So Toro only made this machine for one season, and one season only. Hmm, so why even make it at all if it doesn't cut very well? That's a good question, Terrell. I have no idea. Now this mower came to us because a customer was cleaning out his garage. And he said, hey, I got a mower here. Are you interested in it? And I said, sure, let me see what you got. And when he showed me it was a fly mow, I was a little disappointed. I've got history with fly mow. I used to sell fly mow. And we ended up taking more of them back than we sold, which makes no sense. 
Too bad you just couldn't put wheels on it. All right, let's look at the blade. So it's got just like a regular lawnmower blade on it. Except if you notice, Terrell, there's no lift on the blade. Oh. None whatsoever. It's perfectly flat. The air is sucked through from the other side, comes out here, goes along this channel, and comes out the bottom. And supposedly, that's what lifts the lawnmower off the ground. These little veins here are supposed to lift the grass up to cut it. But that don't work that good. So it only works good on certain grasses? Yeah, certain grasses. The grasses here in the Midwest, in Podunk area, doesn't work very well at all. All it does is push the grass down and doesn't cut it. So it works on that like zoysia grass or like right. it's like a crab grass. The grass in the southern states it works much that's better. Like thicker and heavier grass. So that's the reason why these things were not very popular at all. If you've ever seen one or used one, I guess you're gonna find out. It doesn't cut at all. That's why you're giving it to me. I got more if you want them. You don't want them. No, I don't want them. All right. What am I gonna do? Well, we're gonna take this thing back to my shop and we're gonna get it running and we're gonna try it. Good luck. Wow, what is this? Where are the wheels? So, there's some information on the flymo. Now let's see if we can get this thing to start. So, I got the switch over here which is the stop, run, and choke. So we got it all the way on choke. Now I'm gonna check and see if it's got some compression. And if it does, then we're gonna see if it has any spark. So it feels like it's got compression. Now let's see if we got any spark. Oh, plug boot is hard as a carb. So we need to watch that little thing right there. Oh, a little bit of spark. Now, from what I remember back in the day when I did work for Farrell, when these old Toros would come in, we had trouble with these plug boots. When they would get hard like this, for some reason they would conduct uh, electricity and you would get bad spark. So the first thing I want to do is change this plug boot. So we got to cut this off. Like I said, I remember a lot of times changing plug boots. We'd be working on mowers and it's like this thing has got real crappy spark and I put new points in that in it and it was the plug boot. So I need as much wires as I can get, so I want to take this off. I don't want to just cut the wire off. It might be too short. Because I'm putting this type of terminal on it and it doesn't have the little spike that stabs into the... So I got to kind of cut this back a little to get to the inner wire. Then I fold it back. Then we'll crimp it onto here. Of course I don't have the proper crimping tool. But this works just as good. Now, let's see if we got better spark from just doing that. Let's see if we got better steady spark. Oh look, see? What a difference. It's kind of intermittent. All because of that plug boot. Alright, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just put a regular plug boot on that I had. Just a little bit of lube. So it'll help slide it on there. 
All right. Okay. Now, this has got some kind of weird air filter on it that screws off. And it looks like they used a giant gas cap. Doesn't that, doesn't that look like a giant gas cap? Because look at the way that thing screws on there. Look at that thing. It looks like some kind of cocoon. All right, now I don't want to try to start this thing up on this table because that blade spins the whole time. You know, this 1960s, there's absolutely no safeties on it. Because in the 60s, we didn't care about safety. So I'm gonna put this on the ground. We're gonna give it a little shot of some helper juice and see if it'll lick off. Now normally I just take some carb spray and just spray it in the carburetor. But this thing hasn't ran in such a long time, I don't wanna risk anything. So I got me a little syringe and I got me some two cycle mix. Not to be confused with two cycle mix mower. Mick hates these things. Oop. Ruin that. That's all right, we got it up there. Now I'm gonna give it a little shot. Sounds like a creaky door. Put the choke back on. And see if it'll start. And if it does, then we're probably gonna have to go through the car straight. Part, or maybe let's just try to put some fuel in it. Take a look in the tank. Tank is clean, like brand new. Huh. Let's just put some some mix in there. A two cycle mix mower. And see. I highly doubt if this thing is going to start. Them diaphragms in there are probably hard as a carp. Well, you never know. Oh, the choke is sticking. There we go. Oh yeah, it's sticky. Sticky choke. All right, there it goes. All right, let's see what happens. All right, it ain't gonna start. Let's pull the carburetor apart. Alright, so those pulls, when I pulled it up here on this little table, started leaking a bunch of gas out of there, which tells me that the needle and seat is probably sticking, so we need to go through the carburetor, put a diaphragm in there. So I need to take this carburetor off, a couple of nuts right here, and this gas tank, I'm going to have to take these screws out. Spacer. Had to close the choke to get that to come out. There's no gas shut off when I put gas in it. Fuel line's hard as a carp. Might as well just take this tank off. It'll be easier to see. So once you get the nuts off these studs, look, it just barely won't come off because this bracket's in the way. And I don't want to start bending on stuff. 
on this antiquer. So now I gotta pull this blower shroud off. So there's two little 5 16 headed screws in the back you gotta take off and two in the front. And then this comes off. And now I gotta get under here with a 7 16 wrench. And this bracket looks like it's slotted. So I think all I gotta do is loosen them up and this whole throttle plate assembly should slide off. Now there's a governor spring hooked to this. So I don't wanna stretch that out. I need to get in there and disconnect this governor spring. Now this should be able to slide out of the way. And now I can remove the carburetor. Voila! Typical Tecumish carburetor. Mick right now probably tuned out already. Probably said, I don't wanna say that, mate. I hate those things. They all belong in the bin. So let's take it on the bench and pull it apart. So they've been making this carburetor forever. Still get parts for it. Except for if you're in England, I guess they have problems getting parts or spaz. Have trouble getting spaz over there in England. That's what they call parts, they call them spares. They have their own language over there, similar to ours. Huh. Huh. Some DIY that's gone bad back in the day. Cause this is in upside down. This isn't supposed to be this way. <laughs> and this needle is in there wrong. Look at that. <laughs> 50 year old DIY gone bad. Hmm, unless this is the needle how it was back then. But I know this diaphragm is, was in upside down because that little plate's supposed to be up. So it pushes on the needle. But it was leaking. There's supposed to be a little rubber seat in here. All right, I'm gonna get a new needle and seat and diaphragm. So here's the new diaphragm, 639.78, rotary's got them, 1427, and then here's the needle and seat, 639.32. Now there's supposed to be a little rubber seat in there, and it's gone. So they might have taken this apart and then they blew, blew air through it and blew it out. Because if it disintegrated, there would have been remnants of it left in here. And there's nothing in here. So that needle was sticking down way too far and it wasn't sealing. And there's a little gasket on here. Cause this kit, I didn't see the little gasket in there. So we're gonna use this one over. Put in our new needle in our spring. I said it was in backwards. It wasn't in backwards, it just was missing. Cause it looked weird that that needle was sticking out so far. Something didn't look right. 
See? See how much the needle is sticking out now? Right here. That's how much we need sticking out. That's why the carburetor was leaking when I put gas in it. Because look at this. See how much it's sticking through? It's not supposed to be sticking through that much. This diaphragm is still pliable, but it was in upside down. So I need to scrape that old gasket off of there. So they had this thing completely together wrong. They lost the seat for the needle and they had the gasket on here, then the diaphragm, which is wrong, because see in the book, you got the cover, then the diaphragm with the rivet head up, then the gasket, because that gasket kind of acts as a spacer. So you got the right metering. So chances are somebody tried fixing this themselves or they took it in for repair somewhere and they didn't know what they were doing and they put it all together wrong. There's this little hole in the bottom here. You could purge these carburetors. Because I remember back in the day, this carburetor real popular on those old Toro S200 snow blowers and on other equipment. This is where they would put the, the fitting for the primer hose. So you would pump air to that and that would push on the diaphragm, the air, and it would open the needle and that's how you would prime it. So what we used to do, if we had one that had old fuel in it, but you know, the diaphragms in that were good. We'd take out the high speed needle and we'd pump the primer and it would actually purge gas out of here. Or if it didn't have the primer, we would just take something we could stick in there and push on that, which would open the needle and it would pump fuel out of that, out of that high speed needle. And then we would purge it out, put it back together, and chances are you could get it started without having to rebuild the carburetor. All right, so now we're ready to put this all back on. Need a new little piece of fuel line. See if we can get the fly mode to fly. So this has got a reed block on it. And the reeds look like they're all closed, and it's pretty clean. So this thing's probably got not a lot of time on it. So yeah, we can go ahead and put the carb on. I'm not gonna put a new gasket on there. That gasket should be okay. So if you notice, when we took this thing apart, the governor spring hooked in from the top, and of course that was wrong. So again, somebody had this apart. And good thing we got this manual, because the manual showed us that the spring went in from underneath. Now it's kind of hard to see that. I had to actually look at that under a magnifying glass because my eyes are shot. You're worried about my knees and knees aren't the problem, it's my eyes. So, all these different holes determine the amount of tension that's on the governor spring which is gonna determine the high RPM. So the higher the RPM on this thing, the better it's gonna flow. Because my brother Farrell said that he had a 1988 one and it didn't work very well and they told him to shim the engine to bring this fan closer to the bottom of the deck and they told him to move the governor spring to increase the RPM to get it to float better and he said it still didn't cut any better. So yeah, that spring was in the wrong spot. So again, whoever worked on this didn't know what they were doing. And luckily, I got these old manuals to help us out. All right, we got this thing all back together. It might be flooded because of that carburetor, so I'm gonna try pulling it without the choke on.
do today. You open up the carburetor a little bit. I'm sure it's not adjusted right. Where are those screws? Now a lot of you don't remember, or maybe you do, but the rock band Rush, they wrote a song about this flymo. Remember it? It went, Junk and expensive, my favorite band's Hanson. The flymo floats away, leaving my shop man belongs in a garbage can. My life begins today. Flymo my night away from here. Now all we gotta do is take it out, see if this thing will cut. So I had to shorten the governor spring a little bit to get the RPMs up. I got it running at about 3,700 RPM and I fixed the kill switch. It would have been ideal to run this thing in the spring or summer when the grass is growing, but I think it'll be better running it in some snow. <laughs> all right, let's fire up this flymo.
Works good on frozen grass. <laughs> Maybe you should use it in the winter time, but it did work. Good for ditch banks and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Fly mow by night. Fly mow by night, away from here. Do do. Fly mow I wait away. Fly mow at night, get out of here. Well, there you have it. My vintage Toro 19 inch fly mow. Got it running, and it does work. Doesn't work that bad. Like I said, good for ditch banks and stuff. Would be real good for that. Two strokes, so you ain't gotta worry about the oil getting in spots that don't need to be. They still make these, I guess. They got Honda engines on them now. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Carol Fixes All, that's me right here. Follow me with your fly mows, your wheelless lawn mowers. Hover, hover after me on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel. Gotta be aware of this when you're cutting that ditch bank with your fly mow. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Mid 60s fly mow! Woo! Make my car! Hates them. I don't know if everybody in England hates them, but Mick don't like them. Fly more by night away from here. Do do. Fly more by night away. Fly more by night. Get out of here. That's a beautiful picture of your daughter. Yeah, isn't she beautiful? She. That is the apple of my eye. Now I was thinking the other day. Now remember when we were kids? and you had fleas, and you scratched that neighbor kid, yeah, yeah, and that yeah. neighbor kid said you gave him cat scratch fever. Yes, I remember that. What was that kid's name? It was Rick. No, it was Johnny. Jeez, Andy, these guys are taking forever. You know, I'd like to get out of here sometime this year. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I'm with you, Junior. Lucky for me, I got a trick up my sleeve. Junior. Okay, ready? Lucky for me, oh, I got he, it. he was talking over you. Yeah, I'm with you, Junior. Action. Ready? Yep. Say action. action. Yeah, I'm with you, Junior. Hang on. He's got to say action. Remember, it's Hollywood. Right. Hey, hey, Follow me this way. They're walking. <laughs> <laughs> now I got it running at about 3,700 RPM, and I fixed the kill switch, and here comes the cars. <laughs> 